so this tutorial will just take you step by step through how to make this vector portrait and it might give you a few ideas for how to stylize um, um, a photograph and turn a photograph into a vector design and it will also teach you a few different tips and tricks and um, how to use the various tools in Illustrator. So let's get started in this tutorial by making the background. I'm going to drag out a rectangle shape and I will not give it a stroke outline, but I will give it a gradient fill. And you can click on the gradient option down here. Then in my gradient panel, if yours hasn't come up automatically, you can go window and gradient to bring it up. I'll double click on this end slider. And in the top right hand corner, I'm going to change the mode from grayscale to CMYK. It will automatically come up in grayscale and you'll have to change it. So I'll set each of the endpoints, double click on that one, change it to CMYK again, and I'll keep that as a white. So I want my gradient to go from blue up the top to white down the bottom, so I'm going to get my gradient tool to change the direction of the gradient. If I click and drag from the bottom up, the white colour is going to be on the bottom and the blue colour is going to be on top, and I can shift that around and change the position of my gradient. Okay, next I'm going to make two mountain shapes using the curvature tool. So with the curvature tool I'm just going to make a, a curly line. If I want to change directions and come out straight from an anchor point I need to double click and then I can come out straight. So again double click, go out straight, double click and double click to close that shape off. Now I'm going to just change that to a flat colour for the minute and I want to trim off the excess shape so I'm going to hold down shift to select the rectangle and the mountain and get my shape builder tool. You can go shift M to bring it up if you wanted to and click in that outside shape so now that bit there is a separate shape. Go back to my selection tool and now I'm going to select just that shape and delete it off. Now I'm going to create another mountain shape again. So double click to come out straight, double click to come out straight, double click and double click. And again I'll select that outside rectangle tool and my shape, grab shape, uh, grab shape builder tool and click in that overhanging shape. Now I'll just deselect everything and select that overhanging bit and delete it off. So I've got two shapes here. Um, now I want to create an effect where there's different tones at different points in these shapes. So to do that I'm going to get my gradient mesh tool which is here and just click once and twice. With my direct selection tool, I can target individual anchor points and colour these anchor points different colours. So I'm going to click on this one here. So this one is active and then I'll double click and change the colour of that anchor point. I'll do the same down the bottom. So I want it to get a little bit darker as it goes further down. So now there's a bit of subtle variation. That is actually very dark. So I can go back in, click on those anchor points and adjust them if I need to. Okay, so that's one of them done. And now for this one. So again, I'll get the gradient mesh tool and click once and twice. And then with the direct selection tool, I'm just going to go into those different anchor points. Oops.
now there's some nice subtle variation in these tones in the mountains just helps give it a little bit more depth now the next thing we're going to do is make the trees so I'm going to make one big one get my pen tool and make a click here and drag down and make another anchor point here so I need to swap my fill and my stroke around so there's just a stroke outline and double click on that stroke outline and make it a darker color then going into clicking on that shape I can then go up here to the stroke panel increase the stroke weight a little bit and get my width tool and with the width tool I can click on the bottom anchor point and drag out the base and click on that top one and drag it in a bit so it just tapers and goes from from wide to thin makes it look a little bit more realistic now going back to the pen tool I'm just going to add a few more branches on I'm going to select all three of these. I'm holding down shift so I can make multiple selections. Just change the stroke weight slightly. Go back to my width tool and again click on these end anchor points and widen them out. And then make the top skinny. And you might need to reposition where some of these are so that they all fit on the shape nicely. When you're happy with all that, we're going to turn these shapes into, so they're lines at the moment, but we're going to make it one big shape by going object, expand appearance, and then we're going to join all these little shapes together by getting up Pathfinder, so you can go Window and Pathfinder to find Pathfinder, and click on the Unite option. So now that tree shape is one big shape. I'm going to make another, another tree now. So what I might do actually is I'll grab my rectangle tool and drag out a little rectangle. I'm going to get my eyedropper tool and eyedropper that colour. Okay, and again, go into the width tool. Mm, these ones are joined together. 
don't really want that. Just make sure that Okay, one last branch, since that one didn't work out before. Shift W is the shortcut for bringing up your width tool as well. So I just find the keyboard commands very, very convenient. And I don't like to use the mouse too much, especially not to grab my tools. So just once you're happy with that, you've got a nice little tree shape. You've adjusted the branches. Then you can again select them all and go object expand appearance and then merge them all together in Pathfinder. Then what I did was I got the ellipse tool. I dragged out an ellipse shape. And this, I dropped that white colour. I went object, arrange, centre back. And then with the direct selection tool, I clicked on the left anchor point, hold down shift, click on the right anchor point. So both of these are selected. Now you can click and drag them down a little. And clicked on the top anchor point and drag that up a bit to get a bit of a egg shape happening. Now I'll just select all that and group it together by going Command G. And I'm just going to scatter these trees in the background. So I might make the colour of the branches a little bit, a little bit lighter. So I'm going to select my direct selection tool and select the tree branch because it's grouped together you need the direct selection tool to select individual elements in a group. Now going back to my selection tool I'm going to go object transform reflect and copy. So now I've got a copy that it's reflected. I'll reduce the size of it and I want to send it backwards so I'm going to go command left square bracket and now it's sitting behind this tree here. Take my direct selection tool and click on just the tree part and just make it slightly darker and then I'll go object transform reflect copy and now I've got another one on this side. And then I'm going to select all three of these trees and just hold down my Alt key and click and drag out a copy of all of them. Make them slightly smaller. I want to send, oh, send this one to the front. So I'll select him and I'll go Shift Command right square bracket to bring that one to the front. And 
and then you can just keep arranging your elements until it's looking nice and well balanced. So probably for me this this tree is not great <laughs> so if I was doing a bit more work on it I might um, adjust the branches and make it and come up a little bit so they're sitting over the top of these trees in the background that's okay for now the last thing we're going to do though is we're going to create the snow so to do that I'm going to get my ellipse tool hold down alt and shift to drag out a perfect circle and I'm going to color that white Now I'm going to go Command C and Command F to paste a copy of it in the front and I'm going to give this one a fading sky gradient. In your gradient panel you can select radial gradient and I'm going to double click on that insider and make it little bit lighter. So it's just got a really nice subtle gradient. Now with the Now I'm going to get my symbols panel by going window and symbols. I'm going to click and drag this little dot into the symbols panel. You can make it a bit smaller. And then just click and drag that into the symbols panel. And just click OK. Then with my symbol sprayer, I can just click them all over the place. You can click and hold it down and you get lots of them in a row and you can click just once and get just one of them <laughs> that's easier than clicking and dragging out lots of copies okay so once you've made enough snow and that's just a nice subtle effect there you can just select everything and go Object expand, okay, and then again, object expand, okay, and now all of those little snow shapes are individual shapes rather than just strokes or symbols. And then if there's any overhanging, might have to go object ungroup as well. If there's any overhanging, then you can just delete them off. And that's pretty much how you make the background. In the next video, I'll show you how to make the girl.